The potential of the state of Utah has more oil in oil shale than on Saudi Arabia a couple of times over. The oil industry is, is in, a, in a transition period right now. We're, uh, we're moving off of the conventional oil into the unconventionals. And uh, oil shale has always been a very vast resource which we've been uh, trying to discover ways to, to, to tap into. Oil shale is kind of a misnomer. Uh, because it's not really shale and it's not really oil. The uh, name for the rock actually is marlstone. The material that's in the rock is called kerogen, and kerogen is an oil precursor, and because it hasn't undergone the right processing, uh, right temperature and pressure underground, then if you want to produce oil from oil shale, you have to artificially do that. So the United States has the largest resource of kerogen by far. We've got two companies that are actively working on trying to develop the oil shale. One is Red Leaf Resources, the other is uh, the Estonian company Enefit. My name is Jeremy Pearson and I'm a development scientist here at Red Leaf Resources Inc and I work on developing different ways to extract higher yields and better quality of oil from, from the oil shale. Our two major leases are in eastern Utah in the Uinta Basin, and they both reside in the large Green River Formation, which is uh, where algae has deposited over millions of years, about 50, millions, 50 million years ago, and uh, subsequently transformed. Um, within the oil shale industry, there are, there are really two different types of, of approaches to developing oil shale. In situ, which is underground, and ex situ, which is above ground. Um, in situ technology is where you take heat and you go underground and you try to free the oil from the rock in place or in situ and you capture that oil and you pump it out from the ground. To do that though, you have got to get heat down subterranean and capture the oil subterranean and pump it out. And it's, um, it's not impossible. There are different technologies being experimented on, but it's expensive and it's hard. Um, X that you, you, you pull the rock out of the ground through mining because it's not liquid, it's a rock. And you, so you mine it up. Then you would have some sort of processing facility that you would process the, this rock material through. Um, and we, we call those processing facilities a retort. And so in a retort, you actually would heat up the rock and, and uh, produce this oil. Red Leaf technology is a really unique approach that tries to, to capitalize on economies of scale, large, large uh, mounds of the shale, which allows uh, the company to do a, a slower heating process, which can, which can give uh, higher quality oil and, and potentially reduce the cost to, to a level that can be economically competitive in the near future. The future, uh, the future is bright for, I think, for America and the ability that we have of being able to produce and to innovate and to bring out new ways of producing product. So Red Leaf has um, a significant amount of uh, oil shale under lease from the School Trust Lands Administration of the State of Utah, close to a billion barrels of oil in potential development. When they sell that oil, they pay a royalty in total over time through their leases they'll pay in excess of three billion dollars to the trust lands which money goes directly to the school children of Utah. It's one of the most beautiful and largest potential opportunities for the state. Stable energy prices is is something that provides stable economics and stability the worldwide. You see recessions and and different hardships happen when when the price of oil fluctuates and a, a resource this enormous would be able to provide that type of stability, uh, both both through stable oil prices and through and through local jobs. Of course, uh, these processes take a lot more; they're caught more cost and energy intensive than uh, a traditional oil well, where you're, the, you the oil is in the ground. You don't have to heat it and, and create the oil, make the oil. So um, these types of processes do are they are more expensive than um, than a conventional oil. And so because of that, um, when the price of oil drops precipitously, uh, it makes it difficult for oil shale producers to move forward because um, they need high oil prices to be able to support their, their operations.